So this is called Towers of Hanoi. Sometimes they call it Lucas Tower, if you have seen that movie, Plant of the Apes. The apes, that's how they became smart, right? They play the same. Uh, so this question is, we have these golden plates and then these diamond needles. And then we have the source, we have this destination, and then we have this auxiliary middle. So the, the problem is move everything, right? All those 64 plates from the source to the destination. And the rule is that you can only move one plate at a time, right? One disc, one at a time. And these, each of these, they have a different size. And then you cannot put larger on top of the smaller right so the legend says this is true if you came from india you should know so in a temple in india the monks they started this mission 2000 years ago they're still doing it if they finish it world will end so today we're going to calculate how long it's going to take for them to finish this so at the same time we will learn um, recursion okay they've been doing it for 2000 years Cool. This is a question. Floor is open. Now you make some noise. Instead of 64 discs, that's a lot, I start with five discs. Now talk to your neighbor. How are you going to move these five discs from A to C, one at a time? You can only put smaller on top of the larger disc. Yeah, so yeah, she's, everybody's like, I'm going to put the middle one, move some kind of description right so yes yes uh, maybe for five you could do that right but when it becomes 64 then all that description you know description get gets really complicated i'm gonna move this this one and the second one here now the small one probably on top of c and then i make this empty and i put a third one here yes how do you describe it for uh 64 okay so we don't want to go there you may be able to do that. We don't want to go there because we have seen algorithms. Uh, we could do recursively, we could do imperatively, but this is the algorithm that you have to do recursive, recursion. Otherwise, this can be very, very difficult, right? And this recursive solution is very intuitive, straightforward. So to make it clear, I will start with one disk. This is my base case. If there's one disk I want to move from A to C, how do I do it? Just move it, right? There's no, I don't even need auxiliary, I can just move it. So it's just, if it's a one disk, I'll call that function move one, because eventually I'm going to write it up to move 64. But definitely move 64, eventually somewhere I have to move one. That's my move one function, move one. To move one, I'll just go there best animation ever you have ever seen <laughs> right so that's it now raise your hand if you cannot move one can everybody move one yes so in the future if you see function called move one you don't ask me how do you do that does that make sense this is how you move one right everybody laptop people cell phone people everybody call now I'm two disks. I'm gonna move two disks. This is how I do it. I move the middle one, like I mean the first one to B, and then move the larger one to C, and then move that middle one, because that's a helper, so I move back. This is how I'm gonna move two disks. And then this function I will call move two. So now you can move one, you can move two, so we continue until the end of semester. When you graduate this semester, you can move 64. We just keep doing this, right? Move two, just use move one, right? It just moves to three steps. What I did, I move the smaller one here, bigger one there, and the smaller one top of. So move two function really needs move one. What move one? We did it before, right? I don't have to give you what move one does. I showed you before, this is move two. Now this is move three, right? Move three. How are you going to move three? Now I'll give you one minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you just agreed 
that you can move two disks, right? Yes or no? Yes, cool. If I just block that the largest one, it became the same problem you have seen. That's a two disk problem. Can you do that? Yes, that is. Because that's the largest disk at the bottom, ignore that it became the problem that we just saw earlier, a two disk problem. In the two disk problem, I can take this two disk, I can move it to any other needles. Use one as a helper. So I'm gonna call move to. If I can, if I call move to, that moves that two disk to B. Don't ask me how you do that. I just showed you earlier. Do that. Does that make sense? I know it could be multiple steps. For that case, it's three steps. But I wrote the function to do that. Now I'm gonna do that. Just move that to. Yes, I know. This if the inner, when you call move to actually put the smaller here, put the middle one here, and put it back. Yes, that thing happened. But we don't have to do that because we saw it. We trust that function. It does the same thing. And now moves a larger one to C, and then call that move to again. Go, put back there. Right now that's how I move three. My function to move three it really is like okay move two. I know move two is like three steps. And then move the largest one, and then move to, right? Move to, so it's really this is from A to B, uh, this is A to C, and this is B to C. That's how I move my three disks. So now you should get the idea. Now it could be any number of disks. Four disks, what do I do? Just saw, you saw how to move three disks. Yes or no? I can go back to show you this is how you move three disks. If you can do that, now I'm going to do, take that three disks, just call that algorithm. It could be a hundred of steps, I don't care. Move the largest one here, and then put it there. So with this, you don't have to describe move that, move this, move that. Nope, you just have this generic algorithm to any number of disks. So move four, I need move three, move one, move three. You remember move three is like move two, move one, move two, right? Now you get the idea. If I have n number, 100 disks, if I have 100 disks, what do I do? I'm gonna move the 99 to the middle, and I only have one left, I move that one to the last destination, and then push that 99 on top of it. Then you ask me, how do you do 99? I, I don't know. Then do 98. Then how do you do 98? Do 97. If you keep doing that event, you'll stop there. It's one, two, three, and go back it'll be 100, right? So I'm moving exactly the same thing. You try to do 63, you can't do 63, you wanna do 62, you can't do 62, you, can't, you wanna do 61, your problem becomes smaller and smaller, eventually you can move it. So if I put this into code, entire code, this is it, right? You want to move 64 disks from A to C or source to destination using B as a helper. If it's one, trivial. Just move it. We did that. If it's more than one, I'm gonna move, right? If it's 100, I'm gonna move 99 from A to B, you see as a helper, and then I'm gonna use move last one from A to C, and then on the B, I remember I have 99, I'm gonna take that 99 and move to C, but this time use A as a helper. That's it, that's the entire code. And if you do this with the iterative for loop, while loop with stacks, yeah, you can do that. It's just a huge, it can be difficult to explain all those cases you have to move. But this intuitively, right? I, I just take on top everything and move it here. How do you do that? I don't know. I just ask, the, you know, ask them to move smaller problem. Eventually it'll become one and then it comes back. This is called Tower of Hanoi, right? Tower of Hanoi. So I open this code. Now let's see this code. Animated Hanoi, I will do, let's say, with three, right? Just with three, and then let me make it slow so that you see this process. Uh, yeah, move one second at a time, run. Yeah, three, moves that one, moves this middle one, moves the large one to there, and then, yes, 
these are two move two methods. So this is move three, right? Move three. Now I'm going to show you is move eight. Uh, move eight definitely will run longer. That is, why do you run in a different place? Okay. So this should be is hundred. Now I'm going to move eight discs, right? Eight discs run. Yep, this is eight discs. So it's calling move seven. When you do move seven, you only have this one left. Everything will be in the middle. To call move seven, it's calling move six, doing all that thing. I did, yep, look at that. Now I finished move seven. I moved the last one to the destination, and then I have to take all that, you know, seven discs on top of the eight, you know, the largest one here. But to do that, it calls move six, calls move four, move three all these steps. If you look at this, it's 256 steps. To move eight, you need 256 moves, right? That is definitely slow. I can make it even faster. Just say, let's say nothing, and then probably change it to, let's say 12 discs. Run. Yes, you know the, the monks in India, the temples, they're working hard. They're doing the same for the last 2,000 years. So 12 discs, uh, 10 is, so it's, this is like 496, uh, 4,096 times, right? It has to move because that's what the 2 to the power of 12 is. Yes, this is an extremely slow process, but they are doing it. I didn't even come to the middle. Look at that. When I come to the middle, the largest one should be right here. But that, oh yeah, now I finished middle. So now it's all going back, you know, putting like, you know, the smaller ones to the destination. But otherwise, they're doing this. So yeah, let's wait, wait a minute. Let's finish this thing. Question? Yeah, when this is running, I can answer questions. Yes? Yeah? Huh? How long? I said 4,000 times. To move six, like 12 discs, you have to move 4,000 times. You have to move, move, move there. Eight discs is 256. So when finished, I'll show you. Remember when you did one disc one time, two discs three times, like two to the n minus one. Three discs. You have to one and then two moves, so it's a seven times. It's like that. Four discs will be 15 times. Eight discs will be 255 times. So it's, yes, this is 4,095 times I moved 12 discs. This is crazy. So if you go, this is, a, this is an efficiency, right? So you have to move. If you have n discs, you have to move this number of steps, right? This number of steps. So if you move, right, one disc per second, if you calculate, it'll take 585 billion years, right? If you move like one disc per second, two to the 64, the original problem that people in India are doing, it takes, I, I, you can calculate, it's just a 2 to the power of 64, that many seconds. You divide by 3600, it's an hour, you divide by 24, that's days, you divide by 365, that's years, ends up 585 billion years. So we're safe. But, one thing you have to be careful, the monks in India, they have 10 hands. No. So they do fast. So if they move one million discs per second because they have 10 hands, they God, they, it still takes 500,000 years. So we are safe. Your grandchildren, they're safe. So any, right, iterative, whatever the solution is, it takes long, okay? It takes long. You should be just fine. Now answer my quiz. Five, four, three, two, one. No, you're still calculating? 
They're doing this problem by doing the recursion, right? <laughs> The best way I should have, like, I give you this eight disks and then say, it has to run it. Five, four, three, two, one. I'll stop right here. Wow. <laughs> this is very cool. Yeah, that's right, 99%. Please do it together. Five, four, three, two, one. So this thing says, if it's four, then it's four, right? It returns four. And then if n is 3, then it'll be 2 times 4, then it'll be 8, right? 3 is 8, 4 is 4. If it's 2, then it's 2 times 3. 3 is 8, 2 times 3 is 16, so I think it's 16. That's what you get, 90%. Yeah, it's very good, okay? It's a, and then this is more than 100%. I don't know how you did that. 5, 5, 90, 101%. That's more than enough, yeah? It's two times fun three. And then you have to calculate fun three. Fun three is two times fun four. Four is four. So it's two times fun four is eight. Then two times fun three is 16. Got it?